What's up guys, welcome back. I'm Lorena from Green Healthy Cooking and today I'm going to teach you how to cut a pumpkin and what to do with it. So to keep these little precious fingers safe, you're going to want to take your pumpkin and sit it on the bottom of it so it doesn't roll around. And then you take a very sharp knife and you press it in a little bit to the left or to the right, depending on if you're right-handed or left-handed, of the stem. So you don't wanna cut through the stem because it's so much harder to cut through it and you risk hurting your fingers. So cut a little bit off the stem and then slice your pumpkin all around by turning the pumpkin and moving around that super sharp knife. Eventually you're gonna get all the way around the pumpkin and then it's easy to just pull it apart and then it's time to remove the seeds. To remove the seeds, what you're going to want to do is take a spoon and just start scraping and scraping and scraping and then you can either discard the seeds or you can remove the little seeds from the flesh and then put them in the oven to dry them. Now, there are two different ways that you can cut the pumpkin further. You either cut it into quarters and then put them in the oven like that. You can roast them as big pieces. I like to drizzle a little bit of avocado oil on top of everything. I use my hands to oil the whole pieces. I put them on a baking sheet and then I roast them at 400 degrees Fahrenheit for anywhere from 45 to 50 minutes until they're nice and soft. So once they're nice and soft, you take them out of the oven and then you remove the skin. So the disadvantage of this cooking method is that the pumpkin is super, super hot, but if you wait for the pumpkin to cool down, the skin is not as easily removable as when it's hot. So just try and work really fast and remove that skin so you have these nice big pieces of pumpkin. You can eat the pumpkin just like it is, or what I like to do is I make pumpkin puree out of that. So for that, you use those big pieces of pumpkin without the skin and you put them in a food processor and start processing and processing until it's super, super smooth. Now, your pumpkin puree could in theory be ready to use, but if you want to use it for like a pumpkin pie filling or a smoothie recipe, I highly suggest that you drain it. The big difference between homemade pumpkin puree and canned pumpkin puree is usually the consistency because the homemade has a lot more water but we can achieve the same consistency of a canned pumpkin puree if we drain it. So to drain it, what you're going to do is take a colander, put it over a bowl, then align the colander with some cheesecloth, and then spoon your whole pumpkin puree into it and place it in the refrigerator overnight and I'll let all the excess water drain. So the next morning you take out your bowl from the fridge and all the excess water is gone and you can spoon it into a container where you're going to store it or you can use it for whatever recipe you like, such as a pumpkin pie or a pumpkin smoothie. Now, other ways you can prepare the pumpkin is by peeling it ahead of time to save the heat from your fingers you need a very good vegetable peeler for that. I love the ones that are serrated because it's much easier to peel tough vegetables such as a pumpkin. You can peel the pumpkin and then you go ahead and dice your pumpkin. You cut your piece lengthwise and then again lengthwise and then you just cut it into about one inch pieces. And now there are three really different ways you can use your pumpkin cubes. You can make delicious baby food by steaming a little bit of pumpkin or pressure cooking pumpkin because by steaming or pressure cooking you will preserve the most nutrients in the pumpkin and we know that babies need the most nutrients they can get from simple foods. So I love using my Instant Pot. I add about a cup of water to the bottom of my Instant Pot and then I use a steaming basket on top of my trivet. I add it to my Instant Pot. You put on the lid, you seal it, set it to high pressure and as soon as the high pressure cooking time is over, you release the pressure quickly and transfer your pressure cooked pumpkin into a jar. 
in which your immersion blender fits. And then you blend it until it's super smooth and you store it in a little jar from which you'll be able to feed your baby some delicious homemade baby food. So for us adults, this will obviously not be as flavorful. So we're going to want to prepare it two different ways. We can either simply roast it. To roast it, you add it to a baking sheet. You add a little bit of avocado oil, sea salt and pepper, and then you use your hands to massage the oil and the seasoning into the pumpkin pieces. Then spread them out evenly in one layer. Make sure the baking sheet is not too crowded because if it's too crowded, it will steam instead of roast. And then you put it into the 400 degree preheated oven for approximately 20 minutes. Then you take a spatula and move everything around a little bit so it can roast from the other side and you leave it in for another 10 to 15 minutes or until the pumpkin pieces are nice and brown and roasted. And this is it. This is how you can serve it. It's absolutely delicious. Another very flavorful way to serve it is in a pumpkin curry. I love this pumpkin curry and it's a super easy 15 minute dinner. All you have to do is preheat a pan over medium heat, add a little bit of coconut oil, then add some chopped onion and chopped garlic and then stir fry until it's a about to turn brown and that's when you're going to want to add your yellow Thai curry. You're going to stir fry the curry paste until it's nice and fragrant and then you add one cup of coconut milk and you stir until the coconut milk and the curry paste are well combined. Then add two to three cups of pumpkin. Make sure that every pumpkin piece is submerged in the coconut milk because any pumpkin that is not submerged in liquid will not cook as nicely. So make sure you don't overcrowd your pan add as much pumpkin as possible while still keeping it under the coconut milk, then put on the lid and let it simmer for anywhere from 10 to 15 minutes until the pumpkin is for tender. Remove your lid, add half a cup of frozen peas, give it a quick stir until the peas are defrosted, season your curry with additional sea salt if necessary, and then serve it over steaming hot jasmine rice sprinkle some freshly chopped cilantro on top of it and dive in. It's so, so, so delicious. So here you've got four different recipes that you could make with one pumpkin. Isn't that amazing? I hope you give any of my recipes a try. If you do, please take a picture and show me. I want to see, I want to know how you liked it. And I'll see you with my next recipe. Bye.